name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. We're going to have some exciting stories, and they're going to be from the book of Genesis about a man that is most like our Lord Jesus Christ of anyone else in the Bible, and his name is Joseph. So we're going to start those stories, but first, Eddie wants to say something to you. Well, hello, Eddie. How are you today? Well... I'm really not doing very good. You see, I have a little sister. And my mom, she's always saying, Eddie, let her go first. Eddie, let her play with those toys. Eddie, did you see how cute your sister was? You know, I'm thinking that my mom and my dad, they like my sister better than they like me. I'm just thinking that maybe I'm just a little jealous. You know, I used to get the attention. Now she gets all the attention. Oh, I just feel so bad sometimes. You know, sometimes I almost don't even like her. Whoa, that's serious. Well, Eddie, I'm so glad you came today because we're going to talk about jealousy and the things that you are to do when you are jealous. Well, I'm definitely jealous, that's for sure. And you know, I'm thinking I need to pray for her. So I have been. I've been saying, Lord, thank you for my little sister. Thank you that she's here. But I'm just wondering, is there anything else I should be doing? Well, Eddie, we're going to learn a number of things you should be doing, but I'll just tell you right now that one thing you should be doing is giving her compliments, telling her things that you see that are nice about her. Wow, that's hard. You know, I just can't think of anything. Oh, nothing, nothing comes to mind. Well, now, Eddie, I'm sure there must be something. Well, you know, she loves me. She always saying, Eddie, can I play with you? Eddie, I want to be where you are. Eddie, can I go too? So maybe I could just tell her, you know, you sure do know how to pick a good role model. <laughs> me, <laughs> right here, me, yeah. You're liking the right guy, that's for sure. Well, Eddie, I think you could find something else besides that. Well, you know, I'm going to have to think about it. You know, I'm just glad I came today. If we're talking about jealousy, I need to learn to know what to do. I think, Eddie, what should you do? And I sit there, and I'm just still jealous. So I'm going to listen real carefully today. Oh, so glad I'm here. I hope you guys stay and listen, too. Oh, I got to go now. I love you. Bye. Mm, bye. Bye, everybody. Mm. I have a question for you. Have you ever been jealous? Now, if you're honest, you will say yes. We are going to talk about jealousy today. And everyone is jealous at some time. It's not, if I get jealous, I'll know what to do. It is, when you get jealous, you will know what to do. Now, jealousy is wanting something that somebody else has. And usually, it's wanting their affections. You know, my mother loves my brother or sister more than she loves me. Therefore, you would be jealous. Now, envy is wanting something that somebody else has. But also, it is a lot like jealousy. So we're really going to be talking about both of them today. But you know what the Bible tells us? The Bible says you need to beware of jealousy. Jealousy 
causes terrible things. And you need to recognize when you have jealousy because if you recognize when you have jealousy, then you confess it as sin. The Bible says with God's help, you can stop the sin of jealousy. But if you say, oh, I'm never jealous, then you'll never stop the sin of jealousy in your life, and it can ruin your life. It takes away your joy because you're not focused on what you have. You're focused on what somebody else has, and it's what you want and not what God has given you. God's given you everything you need to have joy and have contentment in your life. Do you know Barry? Barry his father made a lot of money, so Barry always had the latest in iPods and iPads and electronic equipment, and Barry had a fancy bike, and oh, it was wonderful, and oh, he loved it very much. But you know, his friend Jeff, Jeff did not have a father that made a lot of money. Oh, he had a very wonderful father. Your father, it's not what they make that makes them wonderful. But Jeff, he didn't have the bikes and the things, but he could do his homework in 20 minutes. It would take Barry three hours to do what Jeff could do in 20 minutes, and Barry would not get as good a grade as Jeff. Well, do you know what happened was Jeff all of a sudden looked at Barry and he thought, you know, I, I, I would love to have the things that Barry has, but I don't have them. And so as Jeff kept looking at Barry and what he didn't have, instead of what Jeff did have, the Bible says that he became jealous and he became envious. And when he became jealous and envious, his joy was gone. Well, now Barry, Barry who had everything, he looked at Jeff instead of looking at all the things he had, and he thought, I can't do homework like Jeff. I wish I could. And he became envious of Jeff. And the minute he became envious of Jeff, he lost his joy too. Now, you know, kids, that's exactly what jealousy does. And Barry and Jeff, they both needed to know what to do when they were jealous. Well, we're going to learn today that when you're jealous, first of all, you need to pray for the person that you are jealous of. You need to say, Lord, just strengthen them. Cause them to use their gift for you. May they come to know you. You need to pray for the person you're jealous of. Now, a lot of times we're jealous of our brothers and our sisters. Have you ever prayed for your brother and sister? Have you ever said, oh, Lord, bless them, help them, keep them in the way that is right for you? And then after we pray for them, we're to look for something good in them. Now that shouldn't be hard because there's a reason that we're jealous. And because we're jealous, we see something good in them. And so look for it. Hmm. I wonder what they're doing. That is really right. And that's easy. Oh, the next step, it's more difficult. You need to tell them you admire their abilities. Have you ever gone up to your sister or brother or somebody at school and says, I like the way that you're able to, to answer those questions, to do your homework, to play sports, to sing? There's all kinds of things that we can tell them about themselves when we admire their abilities. And then we thank God for what he is doing in that person. Just thank you, Lord, that you've blessed this person and he's bringing glory to you and, and he's serving you. So we need to pray for the person we're jealous of, look for something good, then tell them we admire their abilities and thank God for what they are doing. Well, Barry, he was very unhappy because he didn't have the abilities that Jeff had. And then Barry thought, you know what? I believe in Jesus. That's not right. 
And so he decided, I'm not going to be that way. And so he decided to go up to Jeff and tell Jeff, Jeff, I really admire that you can do your homework so well in such a short amount of time. And you know that as soon as Barry said that, his joy returned unto him because now he was looking at what he did have instead of what he didn't have. And you know what Jeff said to him? Jeff said, oh, well, if you need help, I will be delighted to help you. And then Jeff looked at Barry and thought, that's not right for me to be jealous of him. And so Jeff said to Barry, Barry, by the way, that bicycle, oh, that is such a neat bicycle. I really love watching you just zoom by on that bicycle. And when he said that, well, then he became happy. And you know that I didn't show you this, but he had been filled with jealousy. And Barry had been filled with envy and now they weren't anymore and you know what kids we're going to learn that jealousy and envy they can destroy your life but there's things that you can do as we just saw and barry and jeff both did them and you know our verse today talks about envy and it also talks about how it can be so destructive and the verse says for where envy and self-seeking exist. Do you know that when you are jealous, do you know why you're jealous? Because you're seeking yourself. Oh, I want people to notice me. I want to be loved. I want what they have. And so envy and jealousy come because we do. How many times have you said, to your mom, mom, can I watch you do something? What do we say? We're always saying, hey, mom, mom, look at me, look at me. Oh, hey, hey, everybody, look at me, look at me. And when they are looking at us, then we're very, very happy. And the Bible says, but where envy and self-seeking exist. Now, oh, it says where they exist. Where does envy exist? Well, you know, envy doesn't exist in this board and it doesn't exist in the air. Where does it exist? Only one place. It exists in our hearts. Envy is within the heart of people. And everybody has envy. And everybody has jealousy. That's why today we're going to learn what to do when you have envy and jealousy. So when we say this first, we're going to do, you know, envy is grabbing. I want that. So we're going to grab where, for where envy and self-seeking exist. Ah, so what happens when you have envy and self-seeking? Well, the Bible says you have confusion. You know, I know somebody who's jealous and they don't make good decisions because of it. You know, kids, if you have envy and jealousy in your heart, you will say things and do things, and it's not really who you are. You don't make decisions according to God's word at all. You make them all because you want to get back at that other person or you want to put that other person down. And so it says confusion in every evil thing. Can you think of some evil things? Was one of the things that you thought of murder? Do you know that most murders are caused because of jealousy and envy? Maybe you thought of robbery. Well, robberies are caused because people are envious of what somebody else has and they don't want to work for it. And that's why they say, I'll just take it. I need that. They even risk going to prison because they want it so bad. And our Bible says, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion, oh, I'm all confused, oh, oh what am I going to do? Confusion and every evil thing, fighting and all kinds of evil things, every evil thing. And then where is envy in our hearts? Every evil thing are there. And that's found in James 3, 6, Kids, if you have 
envy in your heart or jealousy, the Bible that's always right says that there it's, it's going to grow. It's going to become confusion. It's going to become every evil thing. And you know what? I want to look this up in the Bible because if it's in the Bible, it's true. Let's see. James, the book of James, chapter 3, verse 18 says, oh, for where envy mm -hmm, and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Oh, we, you stay with us because we need to learn how to get rid of envy in our hearts. But I want you to sing this right now and do the motions. Okay. That was very good. Can you do it one more time? Good job. Okay, let's just try it one more time. That was wonderful. You did such a great job. Now we're going to have our story about some people in the Bible that were full of envy and were full of jealousy. And we're going to see what happened to them, and it wasn't good. Now you may have wondered where the nation of Israel came from. Well, in the nation of Israel, it started out there were 12 tribes. And each one of those tribes was started by a brother. And this man right here, his name is Jacob. And he was the father of all those 12 sons that became the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, Jacob had grown up in the land of Canaan. But because of a little disagreement with his brother, because of envy and jealousy and every evil thing that results from that, he ran away to the land where his mother had grown up. And when he came to that land, he met a woman and he fell in love with her. You know, she was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. And the father of the woman said, you need to work for her for seven years. Oh, do you know the Bible says that he loved her so much that those seven years just seemed like they flew by. But at the end of seven years, the Bible tells us that he went into his father-in-law and he said, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled that we may be married. And he was so excited. This was the day he had been waiting for. Well, you know, there was one little thing that his father-in-law had not told him. And that was that if there was an older sister, she had to get married before the younger sister. Now, there had been seven years they could have talked about that at the dinner table. But, oh, they never did. But the Bible tells us that... You know, in those days, when there was a wedding, they would have a big party with all the men, and then there would be all the women, and then at night, the bride would be covered in a veil, and she would go in, and it would be dark, of course, because they didn't have lights. And so, that's what happened that night. But the next morning, when Jacob woke up, he saw that his wife was not the one he loved. It was her sister. Now, you know what was very, very sad? <coughs> so the next morning, Jacob wakes up and he realizes he wasn't married to the one that he had worked so hard for, the one that he was in love with. He wasn't married to Rachel. He was married to Leah, her sister. Now, kids, it had been a terrible night 
for Leah and for Rachel because Rachel loved Jacob and she realized that her sister got to marry him instead of her. I'm sure she cried all night. And then the next morning, I'm sure Leah thought, oh, maybe I'll please my husband a little bit because we know that she loved Jacob. But you know, Jacob was very upset. He says, where's Laban? Where is he? I didn't work for her. I worked for her sister. I don't love her. I love her sister. And so there she was. They were saying the truth. She was not loved. Well, Laban said, you spend one week with her, then you can marry Rachel, and then you'll work for me another seven years. So after one week, the Bible tells us that Rachel became his wife too. But Jacob loved Rachel. He did not love Leah. And you know, Leah was so sad and she cried out to the Lord there every day. She knew she was not loved. And so the Lord gave her a gift. He gave her what the Bible says is a blessing. What do you think it was that God gave to her? Ah, did you guess a little baby? Yes, she had a little baby and his name was was Reuben and now she thought now now my husband will love me but he didn't he loved Rachel Jacob did not love Leah well as time went by she had another son the first one was Reuben the next one was Simeon the next one was Levi and the next one was Judah and she thought oh now I have four sons Certainly, my husband will love me. But you know, the Bible tells us that Jacob loved Rachel. He did not love Leah. Well, in all of this, I think you can guess what happened. Rachel became very envious of Leah. Rachel wanted what Leah had. Rachel wanted children. And Leah she was not happy with what she had. Leah wanted what Rachel had. She wanted her husband's love. And so that household was filled with jealousy and it was filled with envy. There was no joy. They were not happy with what God had given them. They wanted what someone else had. Now, kids, I want to say this. You know, when you're in a household like that, and maybe you're jealous, maybe somebody has the love that you want, then remember what you're to do? You're to pray for the person you're jealous of. You're to look for something good in them. You're to tell them you admire their abilities, and you're to thank God for what he is doing in that person. But they didn't do that. No, the jealousy just got more and more and more. And you know, finally, the Bible tells us that Jacob had 10 sons and one daughter, and not one of those sons were from Rachel. And Rachel said to Jacob, give me a son or I die. And Rachel said, I, or Jacob said to Rachel, I can't do that. Children are a gift from the Lord. It's the Lord who gives children. They're a blessing from him. Well, the Bible tells us that finally God dear, did hear Rachel's cries. And so he gave Rachel a son. That's right. She finally had a son. But when she had that little son, you know what she says? And the Lord give me another. In fact, that's even what his name meant, give me another. You know, sometimes when we get what we think we wanted, we're not happy then. We want more. And so that little baby, they named Joseph. And Joseph is going to be who our stories are about. Well, as Joseph grew up, Rachel and Jacob taught Joseph about God.
And so they taught him all about God and how wonderful God was. And you know, as he grew up, he was learning about God. And oh, he just really wanted to learn. Now, can I have a picture of him when he's a little older. But they taught him about God from the time he was a little boy. And, you know, he loved to learn about God. Now, there were other sons in that family, right? Do you know that I have known families where there have been some children in that family that just want to hear all they can about the Lord? And then there's others in the same family, and they don't care about God. They just don't care about what God has done. Do you know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping that you will be the one in your family that wants to hear about God. And Jacob, he had had a vision from the Lord. One time he had a dream, and there were angels going up and down a ladder. And, and he must have told Joseph, yes, the Lord spoke to me in a dream. But, but at the top was God. God was at the top of that ladder. And then he must have told him about the time that because Jacob kind of walked with a, a little limp there. And he says, oh, that happened when I wrestled with God. You know, I thought I could just live my life and, and I thought I could figure things out. But then I realized, oh, no, no, I need God's blessing. And so one night I was wrestling with the Lord. And I says, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And that's the night the Lord touched my hip. You know, Joseph, God is real. He's involved in your life. Always follow him. And Joseph did. Well, when Joseph was about seven, his father, who had been from the land of Canaan, decided to take his family back to Canaan. So when they went back to Canaan, of course, all of the family went. The brothers went, the sister went, and of course, there was Leah and Rachel. And of course, Joseph went also. But you know, on their way back to Canaan, Rachel got exactly what she had asked for. She had said, oh, give me another son. And so she had a baby on the way. But you know, when she had that baby, the Bible tells us that she died. And so there was this little baby, and I'm sure that Leah took care of the little baby. But you know what that meant about Joseph? Joseph then didn't have a mother. Do you know all of these boys, their mothers were still alive. But Joseph's mother wasn't. Does your mother kind of stand up for you sometimes? Yeah, Joseph didn't have anyone. But you know, the Bible tells us that Joseph's father loved him the very most. And do you know why he loved him the very most? Oh, most people think it's because he was the son of his favorite wife. No, that's not the reason the Bible tells us. It was because he was the son of his old age and because he loved the Lord. And, and, and there's other writers other than the Bible that said that he was full of wisdom. Oh, you know, he was just a wonderful young man. Well, one day, the Bible tells us that he and four of his brothers, I only have two of them here, but four of his brothers, they went out to a place to watch the sheep. Well, when they came home, the father knew that something had happened that shouldn't have happened. And so he said, hmm, whom should I ask to tell me the truth? And of course, you know who he chose. He said, Joseph. What happened when you were out there? Now, if Joseph told his father what happened, would he be a tattletale? Do you know the answer to that is no, he wouldn't. A tattletale is someone who tells on someone to make them look better. Joseph wasn't doing it to be a tattletale. His father asked, you should never do anything that you cannot tell your father and your mother. And when they ask you, you need to be 100% honest. And Joseph was 100% honest. He told them the truth. And you, if you are with your friends and they are doing something that hurts them or hurts others or something that is against the law, you need to tell. If they're hurting themselves, oh, I can't tell because of, no. You know, if you're 
telling just to get them in trouble, that's different. And so Joseph, he was honest and he told because his father trusted him. Do you know I've had some kids and they say, oh, well, my parents, they don't trust me. You know why they don't trust you? Because you haven't been honest. If you are honest, you will be trusted. And Jacob trusted Joseph because he was honest. But when he told, do you think that the brothers liked him for telling what he should have done? He did the right thing. But the Bible says they became very envious and very jealous and very angry. Do you know that if you do the right thing, people aren't always going to like you? You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he came down to this earth and he always did the right thing, didn't he? But there were people that were envious of him, and it ended up in confusion and every evil thing. And you know, but Joseph said, I've got to do what's right. Well, shortly after this, the Bible tells us that Jacob got all of the brothers together, and he decided that he was going to give Joseph something special. Now, Jacob's mother and father was Isaac and Rebekah, and they had done something they shouldn't have done. They played favorites. And you know, Jacob, he was now playing favorites. And you know what playing favorites causes? It causes jealousy. And we need to beware of jealousy. Don't do something that would cause jealousy in the family. And yet Jacob did that. Maybe your parents do things that cause jealousy. Maybe they really do play favorites and maybe you're not the favorite and there's nothing you can do about it. But you know what you need to do? Beware of jealousy. Even though it's not fair and you can't change it, don't let jealousy reign in your heart. Do you know with God's help, you can stop the sin of jealousy and you need to do that. And of course, we've been learning how you do that, don't we? Yes, you pray for the person you're jealous of. You look for something good in them. You tell them you admire their abilities and you thank God for what he is doing in them. Yes, there's something you can do when you're jealous, but these older brothers did not do it. And what Jacob did, he gave Joseph something that he probably shouldn't have. But he said, Joseph, I'm going to give you this coat. And this coat means that you are now in charge of your brothers. He was only 17. Some of his brothers were over 40. How do you think it made them feel? I think you know, very jealous and full of envy. And, you know, we have fancy coats maybe, and we don't wear them all the time. But in those days, they would wear their coat every day. So every day, they would see their brother. They would see him wearing this coat that showed that his father loved him best and showed that he was in charge over them, and they didn't like it. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that they hated Joseph and they could not speak a peaceful word. Oh, he might have been the favorite of his father, but he had to live with 10 older men all the time that were always saying things to him that wasn't nice. What if every time you walked into your house, somebody said, oh, would you just leave? Don't touch that, that's mine. We're talking, I just don't want you here. Would you, don't sit there, that's my place, and besides, I don't want you next to me. Would that be happy? No. And that's how these brothers treated Joseph. It was very, very hard for Joseph to live in that family. But you know what the Bible tells us? The Bible tells us that Joseph did nothing but love his brothers in return. Well, God did something for Joseph. God says, I'm going to give Joseph something very special. <coughs> Remember, I told you that Jacob had had a dream that God had given to him? Well, the Bible says that God gave Joseph a dream too. And kids, the next morning when he got up, he told that dream to his father. 
brothers. Can you imagine if you just have a plain, ordinary dream? Sometimes it's just like, whoa. But if you have a dream from God, how vivid it must be. So the next morning, he said to his brothers, you know, I had this dream last night, and I dreamed that there was, there was a sheaf of wheat. It was mine. And you know, kids, when they would harvest wheat and gather the wheat to take it out of the field, they would make these bundles, and they would tie them around, and, and then they would, they would have a, a sheaf of wheat. And he had made one, and his brothers, they were all working side by side. And then he says, you know what? My sheaf of wheat just stood up straight, and your sheaves of wheat just bowed down to mine. And you know, kids, he says, that's what happened. You know, we had this, this, this wheat, and, and here's mine, and here's all yours bowing down to it. Well, do you know what the brothers said? The brothers, they're the ones that interpreted it. They're the ones that said to him, you think that we're going to reign over you or that you're going to be over us someday? I don't think so. We'll never bow down to you. And the Bible says they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. And his words were only, this is what my dream was. Well, after he had that dream, it says he dreamed yet another dream. And he told it to his brethren. And he says, you know, I dreamed a dream, and the sun, and the moon, and the star, 11 stars, they bowed down to me. And he told it to his father, and he told it to his brothers. And he says, I don't know how the stars would bow down, and the sun, and the moon, but that was his dream, and they were bowing down to him. And you know what? The Bible says that his brothers envied him and they were jealous of him and his father says are you saying Joseph that your mother and I will bow down to you now his real mother was dead but Leah had taken that place in the family and the father though kept those sayings in his heart he thought hmm I wonder if God has something for my son but of course, the brothers who could not speak a nice word to him, now they were really mean to him. And of course, they were probably especially mean to him when the father wasn't there. Well, the Bible tells us that his older brothers took the sheep and they went to a city called Shechem. Well, these older brothers, they could be very nasty and very mean and do very cruel things and something had happened at Shechem and it made Jacob worry about them. Yes, Jacob loved Joseph more, but Jacob also loved his other sons. And so he said to Joseph, he said, Joseph, will you go and check on your brothers? If Joseph went to check on his brothers, it was 40 miles and, and there were wild animals and, and there were robbers. And, and you know what? How do you think his brothers were going to treat him when his father wasn't there? Do you think that Joseph would go and check on his brothers? Well, we're going to find out next time whether he said he would or he wouldn't. But there was another son, and his father asked him to go and check on those that had need, to check on those that he wanted to be his children also. And that son, he willingly left his home in heaven. And do you know why he left his home in heaven? To come and check on his brethren? Because the Bible says that his brethren truly were in danger. They truly were in danger, and they had a problem, and there was no way they could solve their own problem. Because, you see, they had sinned. They had all sinned. And the punishment for sin was to be forever separated from God in heaven. And God loved them, and he wanted them to live with him. That's why he had created and made them to live with him someday.
And so when this son, which of course was the Lord Jesus Christ, went down to seek and to save those that were lost in their sin and in danger of punishment forever, he was treated very cruel and very mean. There were some men that were very jealous of him because he was the favored son. And they didn't even believe that he was the son who he was. And yet he came, he did so many miracles. He did things that only God would be able to do. No mere man could walk on water, could take a, a little lunch and feed 5,000 men plus the women and children. That's impossible. So he proved that he was God come down. But they were jealous and they put him on the cross. But he says, I will die on that cross. And while he was on that cross, God put upon him the sin of the world. And on that cross, he paid for your sin and he paid for my sin. And the Bible says that in the end, when the day was over, he said, it is finished. My blood has been shed for the sin of all of mankind. And then to even further prove that he was God, the Bible says he came alive again in three days. He came alive. He was alive. You know, kids, if you die and anybody else has ever died, once you're dead, you're dead. You know, oh yeah, there might be those out-of-body experiences and but they don't even know if they were really dead. But Jesus, three days later, when his body even had begun to decompose, he raised himself from the dead. And the Bible says then, of course, that he not only went home to heaven himself, but he safely will bring home to heaven all those who put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've never said, oh, dear Jesus, I've sinned. I know that I have done wrong. I don't want to continue in my sin. I want to turn from my sin and follow you. And I believe you died on that cross for me and came alive again. And I want to be your child. The Bible says it right here in John 1, 12. It says, but as many as received him, as many as received the fact that Jesus died for you, to them he gives the right to become the children of God. Oh, we're not all children of God. No, if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives us that right. And uh, where do children live? They live with their parents, don't they? And so the Bible says that when we become the children of God, that someday we are going to go and live in heaven with our Father forever and ever you know, if you've never before said, oh, dear Jesus, I know that I've sinned. Oh, I've, I've had jealousy and envy. And, and I believe Jesus died on that cross. He was your only perfect son. He died for me. I want you to come in and just forgive my sin, dear Lord Jesus. I want to become part of your family. Turn from my sin. Start doing that which is pleasing to you. And then Jesus says, of course, you don't go to heaven right away. You stay on this earth and you grow. Like Joseph, if you read the Bible, you will become full of wisdom too. And you can live your life in a way that will glorify God and bring honor to him. And then someday he's going to take you to heaven to live forever with him. Oh, I'm so glad you came today. But I want to tell you that I know we know that everybody has jealousy. So if you were sitting here today thinking, yeah, there's somebody I'm jealous of, then what you need to do with God's help, you can stop that sin of jealousy. First of all, you confess it. It was sin. I shouldn't have wanted what they had. I should have been content with what God has given me. And then, of course, remember what you're to do. Oh, yes. You pray for the person you're jealous of. Remember that. Right now, pray for that person so you remember. Now look for something good in them. Look, it won't be very hard. Tell them that you admire their ability. Go up and say, you know what? You really are good at sports. You know, I noticed how well you listened and answered and how well you obeyed. Tell them, admire their abilities, and thank God for what he is going to do in that person. Do that today. Break that sin of jealousy. Don't let 
confusion and every evil thing be in your heart. And God says it is if you allow envy and jealousy to stay there. Oh, I'm so glad you came today. You know what? Just follow the Lord. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you next time where we can learn and see, did Joseph go? I will give you one little hint. The decision that he made changed the course of his life, his father's life, the son's life, and actually the life of that entire nation and actually the world. Whoa, it's important that we ask God and do the right thing. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.